Hi, this is Dave with Dave's TR4A. Um, it's been quite some time since I done a video. Uh, in fact, I think the last ones I did were uh, some of our trip uh, from here to Watkins Glen for the festivities there for a week, which, uh, oh my God, if there's any way, if they bring that, I'm sure they'll bring it back eventually, but uh, you you really need to go to it if you haven't gone. It's it's uh, there, there's just aren't words to describe it. It's, it the whole town just turns into a giant sports car uh, extravaganza. You'll see stuff that you only seen pictures of in magazines driving around there. It's just great. Uh, so anyway, um, to back to my car here. Uh, I haven't done any videos on it, but I've done a lot of work on it uh, through this uh, uh, downturn in activities here. So uh, I guess I should uh, I should bring you up to speed on on uh, the history here lately. So I <clears throat> when I was driving back from um, see we left uh, St Stowe, Vermont, and drove back all the way, straight through to Watkins Glen which was about um, 450 miles, I think. Uh, it was basically an all-day drive. <clears throat> and uh, that was basically our group of six cars that went on that trip to uh, uh, New England. Um, from there, then, myself and my friend Jerry, who lives in Hudson, Ohio, we're both from, in Ohio, so we, we left real early the next morning to drive home and then the rest of the guys were going down they were in the from the uh, Pittsburgh area so they were they were going to all drive the other four guys were going to drive down there so on the way back I noticed the uh, shifter was like rattling and uh, I could pull up on it if I pulled up on it it would go away if I let go it would start rattling again and I thought well that's not not a good sign so um, I got the car home and uh, determined or found out that the uh, the front differential or not front differential the front universal joint on the on the drive shaft was shot and you know it's it was my fault probably because um, that was one of the things that I didn't lubricate or grease before before we left on our trip and it was just under 3,000 miles uh, it's, it's a you know shame on Dave you know I should have done that but uh, anyway so I thought, oh, problem solved. So I, I basically uh, replaced the drive or the universal joint. I actually did both. Took the drive shaft out and replaced both of them, and um, the vibration was still there. And then I noticed there was a whole lot of oil uh, on or dripping out of the uh, differential. And here the pinion seal had, had gone, I guess, on our trip, and uh, it basically pretty much torched the. Uh, the differential so I looked around you know should I rebuild it uh, or look for some alternative and I thought well you know in for a penny in for a pound I'm still I was still working at the time I'm just recently going to retire here uh, at the end of December but uh, so I had income to to do stuff with a car so um, I decided to go the Richard Good route so uh, a local guy here had a uh, differential out of an infinity it was the uh, 3.966 or whatever it is ratio which is pretty darn close to 3.7 to 1 which is what the stock one is so uh, I bought that from him I put about 80 bucks worth of seals in it just since I had it out I painted it up and everything and then I went and I got the uh, I ordered the uh, the kit from Richard Good to install it I ordered his uh, his hubs and CV axles and I even put the keen cert update in the swing arm where you basically convert the stud thread from a fine thread to a coarse thread into the aluminum so put all that in there still got a vibration and I thought well you know what I'm just gonna draw I, I don't know what else and I in the back of my mind I kept thinking maybe it's the transmission but I don't want to I just didn't want to do that because I, I don't know, I, I haven't really talked about that a whole lot, but uh, uh, we had gotten different or overdrives from a guy, myself and another guy here in Cincinnati, and uh, it was nothing but problems. It was 
it's, it's basically the old story, you get what you pay for. It was like a $1,400, or it was 1100 it was I don't know, it was like 1100 or $1,400 that we send him our, diff, our transmission, he puts an overdrive on it and sends it back. And um, it was just one one problem after another. So uh, I didn't, I just hope that it wasn't that. So, but finally I got to the point where um, I, I just to kind of put my mind at ease, I thought I'm going to disconnect the drive shaft from the transmission and uh, throw that or and then start the car up and just see is the noise there. Well, that was the noise. So I had to take the transmission out and um, talk to a couple of buddies of mine. I was not going to send it back to that guy again. There's no way in hell. So uh, I decided to rebuild the thing myself. They said they would, one of the guys, my friends was going to send me a dummy main shaft so I could, I could work on the overdrive. And then um, I'm pretty sure that the noise was in the overdrive because uh, it would, it would get louder and quieter depending on whether I had the overdrive engaged or not. So, <clears throat> so anyway, I uh, decided to pull the transmission and rebuild the overdrive and I'm thinking I don't have a whole lot of video of that but I do have a lot of pictures so maybe I might do some kind of a narration of not only that but the um, uh, but the uh, differential update too because that was kind of an interesting one and uh, the car does seem that it's a lot quieter now and a uh, lot more solid uh, I don't know that I needed a limited slip differential but you know with 110 horsepower or whatever but but anyway it's there so uh, so there's basically those two things that I did and then that gets to where um, I am right now so so basically um, one of the the carpet was getting pretty ratty it was a kind of a cheap I think it was a like the, the cheapest one I could get, um, it might even been a bit an eBay one, I don't know, uh, uh, but it was by far the one of the, it, it was basically about black carpet, I'll say that. I mean, and with the seats in, you don't see that much of it, so it's not that big a deal. So uh, I decided, I might, Roaster Factory was having their sale on carpets, so um, I decided to, to bite the bullet and get the uh, Wilton Wool carpet. And so that's what I have here. I don't know if you can see if I turn on this light. It's it's definitely black. <laughs> um, now the seats out here that that's going to be another video. I'm I'm getting new seat covers for my uh, Miata seats. There, those are getting a little uh, long in the tooth. Um, but uh, if I can get this, hold on a second. couple of things I wanted to show you let me get my light again here is the first thing is um, I bought one of these uh, newer style uh, water valves for the heater let me get this thing where it's gonna stay come on is that gonna work there we go okay so I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here um, the, the valve is, is a drop-in replacement. Um, the part, I don't have the, I can get you the part number. I'll put it in the, I'll tell you what, I'll put it in the description when I post the video. Um, some people have said they've had problems getting this hose on. Uh, it, can, it went on fairly easy on mine. Um, I didn't lubricate it. I might have put a little bit of soap on it, I think, maybe. And it, you know, like liquid soap. And it, uh. It, it went right on fairly well. What I really wanted to show you was how I how I connected the uh, control wire from the dash. I just used a electrical ring terminal. I basically took off the uh, 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 insulator and and then just crimped it right on the the uh, heater wire. And then the of course the ring terminal goes over the pin on the the heater control and the uh, the force required to open and close this valve is about 30%, I bet, of the uh, what it takes to work one of the stock valves. So this this will probably last for quite a while. 
Uh, I don't I don't expect it to be that big of a deal. So there's that, and I, I will put the uh, part number for that that on there. The other thing I did is um, I replaced the stay rod on the hood to hold the hood up with these gas struts. Uh, a friend of mine in northern Ohio sent me the part numbers for the strut and this little ball pin thing that that uh, you connect them with. They're sold separately. Um, these are were like twenty dollars, just maybe just under twenty dollars, and the the four um, chrome uh, stud ball stud things were around ten bucks. And then I just made this bracket. This is just. Uh, eighth inch by one inch wide uh, flat stock and I just made up a cardboard template to uh, to locate all the holes you know I basically did these two first to get the the hole centers right for the uh, the hinge and then just bent at 90 degrees and just kind of held the strut out there to where I could see I had maybe a quarter of an inch of clearance between the the end of the strut and the, the bolts holding it on the hood and once I got that done, then I just, you know, they, they just extended, you know, you, you know, uh, you can't push them in. So basically I just, it was extended. So I bolted it on and then that located the hole here for the other end. And you can see that. And then, um, just bolted it up. You know, it took, uh, it was probably like a two hour, uh, upgrade. Um, and, uh, I'll tell you what, it's, there's no rattle anymore. And, the other, let me get rid of this light. The other nice thing is that you can close it from either side with with one, you know, with one hand. Well, I guess you could with the other too, but you know, there's no noise or anything. Um, so there's that. And then the last thing are the seats. I found the, these seats. Um, they're leather. Um, the guys on the internet, I'll post, um, I, I, I saw a YouTube video of a guy restoring his Miata seats and he used seats from this, this guy and um, they turned out beautiful. He, he did Naga hide, but these are leather um, and it has the, uh, you know, the speaker cutouts there, the perforations. And I sent him a, just a, a picture of the TR4A logo. and. The, that's what he did for the seats. So that, that looks pretty good, I think, from just a photograph. And then uh, these have the perforations for cooling, uh, or at least to keep it fairly cool. So anyway, um, that's about it. I'll be posting more videos of the seats, hopefully. But uh, I just wanted to kind of check in and let you guys know that I'm still out here. Uh, hope everybody's safe and uh, have a, a great holiday.